So I think this project went off really well. The stuff is delicious and it seems like I got it about the right consistency. I made two batches. The first one was way too stiff and the second one seems just about right. So I think all the research I did really paid off and I'm really stoked to be adding this to my arsenal of food preservation techniques, especially since it has to do with apples, which I think are the king of homestead fruits for temperate areas because of these diverse, versatile uses like apple butter. And think about this. Um, apple butter, it's like a concentrate of the nutrition and goodness of an apple. If I go out and work in the woods all morning and I come back really hungry and I can't just eat a whole basket of apples, but you could probably fit an entire basket of apples into a pint of apple butter. And that way I can spread the equivalent of several apples on a piece of toast and eat it without the huge fiber content. And the same goes with dried apples. Yes, the moisture is gone, the bulk is lowered, but they are still packed with fiber. But I think some really important questions remain. Uh, how long will my apple butter keep? There are accounts that are really specific that the apple butter could start to go off in the spring when the weather warmed up. Other accounts say it was stored in the warmest area of the house, which is like the garret or the, the attic, and keep there for 25, seven to 25 years. Um, one account says they only made it every seven years. So how important is sugar? The only four apples that I found in old literature, like pre-1900, that were said to be good for making apple butter, all have the name sweet or sweeting in them. So this class of apples, sweets or sweetings, is a largely neglected group of apples now, of which I'm very interested suddenly in collecting. And this is a group of apples that were basically for growing your own sugar to use for things like boiled cider and, and uh, apple butter. The other question would be acidity. Like if I threw in a measure of very tart apples or just use apples that had high acid in general, that doesn't mean that they have low sugar, it just means that they also have high acid. And then cook that down into this concentrated form, is that going to help with preservation? And finally, what effect would cooking it over an open fire, maybe picking up like some smoky flavor and stirring it continually all day with a wooden paddle have? I'm kind of assuming that it probably doesn't have a huge effect. I was able to make my apple butter very fast in these small quantities because the moisture leaves really fast, so it really didn't take that long. I didn't have to stir it very much. I used an immersion blender to break up the apples instead of stirring it for 10 hours. But the truth is, I don't know. I don't know what effect it'll have, and I won't know until I actually do it both ways. And really, it's going to take years of making, storing, and eating apple butter to really kind of feel like I've got, I understand it. Probably. We'll see. So check back with me in 10 years. And in the meantime, if you want to read more details about this project, uh, read the, blog the accompanying blog post on my website, skillcult.com. 
and also I'm posting all of the research I did, which is even more interesting. Uh, you know, this is the original sources. I took all of the relevant quote, interesting quotes, and I'm putting them all in one place on my website so anyone can access those without doing the hours and hours and hours of research that I did to find them. All right, thank you for watching, and if this was useful to you, please hit the like button because things like likes, comments, and subscriptions really help me to reach more people, and that's what I want. Thanks.